hi everyone and welcome to my channel i am temi banjo a youtuber in lagos nigeria and today i'm going to be showing you nigerian keto meals and this is the second part i'm going to be showing you guys i have a first one which did very well people made me know that they needed more recipes for keto especially in nigeria here where we have a limited you know on starchy foods to eat so it is very important i document everything i eat on my keto diet so i'm here to show you guys what i eat on a keto diet and just nigerian keto meals in general so if you do like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up because a lot of work stress research has gone into making this video so make sure you give this video a thumbs up hello once again and welcome back to my channel and i am timmy banjo i said mentioned earlier and today i am showing you guys keto meals nigerian keto meals because we are short of what to eat on a daily basis if you're on a keto diet if you're in nigeria if you're in west africa generally so these are the meals i'm going to be showing you guys and because most of our food here around west africa um mainly starch is very very difficult for us to find um keto meals so this is all i have documented for you guys to see i hope you do enjoy this video mind you keto is a high fat diet and low carb diet so you are allowed to eat protein and vegetables so if you enjoy this video make sure you give it a thumbs up most importantly so let's just start with this video our first meal for today is going to be a low carb spaghetti a uh, low carb pasta so what i'm doing now is to saute all my ingredients all together so everything will you know marry each other when i'm ready to mix it up so i have spring onions in the pot frying then i'm going to add that paste i showed you guys which is made up of garlic ginger parsley and some salt you are not allowed to use um seasoning cube well most seasoning cubes when you're on a keto diet because uh, most of them contain carbs so i'm just going to fry my chicken here because this is the protein i'm going to have in my zero um pasta So I added some salt and also some pepper. Remember to up your sodium intake because of energy and because of the way the keto diet is designed, you can easily pass out if you don't have enough sodium in your body. So make sure you take enough salt, iodized salt and just enough sodium and enough water. You have to be always hydrated because of the way the keto diet is designed. So this is the pasta I'm having. I got this from the market where i stay in lagos island it's called okari market and it has zero carbs zero sugar zero fiber zero net carb like i think you can even eat this when you're fasting because why would pasta be zero net carb so this is what i'm having um as my pasta i'm just going to drain the water because the water is there as a preservative so i'm going to drain this and just pour this on the fire to fry it out so before I do that, I'm going to saute more vegetables, which is made up of onions, um, spring onions, red bell pepper, green bell pepper, and yellow bell peppers. I'm going to just fry this up with that same paste because I, I need to make this as spicy as possible so that it will look like I'm having the normal pasta. So I have to just make sure I cook this with the regular spices I will normally do if I'm having normal pasta. And also add some salt to taste and some pepper because I like heat a lot. So if you do want to see more recipes on keto diet, most of the ones that don't make it here, make sure you check my Instagram out, which is Timmy Banjo, as you will have seen on the screen many times. Check out my Instagram handle and, you know, follow me, check out my highlights. I have saved keto meals there that you can check out so make sure you do you can save them anyone you don't understand what is going on be sure to ask me and i will reply you so this is my pasta now i'm just going to add all the vegetables the chicken everything i made separately with the spice i'm going to add this to my pasta mix it all up and 
that's it your pasta is ready So if you want to know how this tastes, I think you might have to, you know, want to taste it yourself because our taste buds are different. Left for me, I loved how this tastes. Although people say it tastes like rubber, which is true, but I do not have a problem with it. I'm absolutely fine with how it tastes. Imagine I give up pasta for this. I'm totally fine. So I'm serving this up with chicken and this is just a normal keto meal you can have and remain on the keto diet. Our next meal is going to be cauliflower and garlic mayo sauce. So I'm having um, cauliflower here. Sorry, I'm having mayo, garlic, salt, pepper, and a little bit of water. For the measurement, you have to use your discretion because it depends on the amount of mayonnaise you use. So you want to make the amount of mayonnaise to be equal to the amount of water you use. And just have like a watery consistency here because you see what we're going to use it for later on. I'm just going to mix this up and when it is dissolved properly, I'm going to pour it on the fire like it's already in the heat now. So for some more fat in my diet, I'm going to add um, about a tablespoon of butter. And of course, my cauliflower rice, I'm going to grate this out. Some people use a um, food processor to, you know, make their cauliflower rice. Some people buy their cauliflower rice already grained. Some people, you know, boil their cauliflower rice and then use their spoon or fork to this, um, this, dissemble or scatter it rather just just scatter it but i prefer to break it because this give me evenly consistently grain and all the grains are just you know tiny enough and look like rice if you know what i mean so i like to grate mine and then go ahead to cook and i don't like to stop where the cauliflower stops i still like to grate the stalk of the cauliflower because once you grate it it becomes the same consistency as the cauliflower you were using so i still grate the stalk along with it so this is what i have now and i'm just going to pour this and transfer this to the mayo that is cooking on the flyer on the fire sorry mind you you have to wait for this to become a little bit thick because if it's watery your cauliflower will stay longer on the fire and you don't want your vegetables to overcook so you need to make sure the mayo sauce thickens before you add your cauliflower rice so i'm just going to keep mixing this and make sure everything is evenly distributed in the pots and well cooked i mean you want your cauliflower to be a little bit tender to a rice consistency if you know what i mean and once that is done it is ready so the first time i had this sauce was when i just tried to make a sauce for my egg frittata which i'm going to show you guys very soon so as you can see on the screen here i just tried the to pour some rice sorry some cauliflower into the remaining sauce and how it came out was mind-blowing that's why i decided to make this a recipe for me keto is just about experimenting with all the ingredients i have making sure everything is keto compliant and with that i'm going to have a new recipe so i'm always excited to try new things just to experiment and see what it will bring me so my cauliflower rice is done and i call this cauliflower in mayo sauce very delicious very tasty i'm having this with turkey of course my protein and some avocado peel which is a very very balanced keto meal this is the right amount of fat carbs and vegetables and protein you need in your diet So for me, this is totally fine to have for breakfast, lunch, 
dinner our next meal is going to be a wrap it is the mozzarella wrap the reason why my pot is dry is because i was frying bacon and i was thinking the bacon was going to bring out some oil so i didn't put oil in the pot sorry in the pan so that's why my pan was looking very very dry and crusty so i ended up adding butter to the pan to fry the chicken So I'm going to add some salt to my chicken and some pepper, just regular seasoning to make sure my um, chicken is not flat or doesn't taste flat. And also I added some garlic powder to it. So this is going to be the filling of my mozzarella wrap and I'm just going to fry this and make sure everything in this pan here is done completely, then transfer it to a bowl. I'm going to cut up my spring onions and this is what I'm going to have also in my filling for the mozzarella wrap so you want to cut it any shape you want but I like to do the slant size or slant just do whatever makes you happy just cut it up however you want and it's fine I'm going to transfer everything into a bowl add some mayo mix this up and set aside as my filling You can go in as heavy as you want with your mayo because hey it's a high fat diet so go in as heavy as you want with your mayo but since i'm having mozzarella as my wrap which is also fat it's cheese just pure cheese so that's why i decided to you know cut back on the mayo so if you want more mayo you can go in as much as you want so this is my mozzarella cheese i'm just going to cut this up and spread on this pan and you will see the magic i'm going to create with this cheese i'm going to allow this melt in the oven is it melt or just spread and you know melt in the oven and spread out because it's eventually going to turn into my wrap so i'm trying to cut it as flat as possible so it is easy to spread out and become like a sheet or become like a you know taco shell <laughs> So once it's melting, I'm going to use my spoon to spread it out so it is very wide, wide enough to become a reasonable wrap and put it back in the oven and just make it to um, continue to dry up. Mind you, the longer it takes in the oven, the drier it's going to be. I left my mozzarella in the oven for about 25 minutes once upon a time and by the time it came out, it came out crispy, like it was cracking like chips. I'm not complaining, I liked it, I had it with salad and it tastes really nice. So the longer it takes in the oven, the, the crispier it's going to be. So this was about 15 minutes out and I had to like use my fingers to pull it out because a part of it was about burning and i didn't really bring it out so i also had to wait for it to melt so that it won't burn my fingers so i had to um, use the fork to assist myself to scrape it all out from the pan So once that is done, I'm going to start adding my filling into my mozzarella wrap and just on a straight line so that I'll be able to wrap it up properly. Then I will roll this up obviously and because it's, it doesn't have like a glue to stick on um, both ends, I'm going to pop this back into the oven so it becomes a little bit crispier and you know it seals on 
the end of the um, mozzarella cheese i'm obviously going to cut this off so i can have it in little bits So I'm going to put this back into the oven and just make it, you know, sealed properly and also be, get more crispy. And then once I bring it out, it is hot and ready to eat. This is a fat filled, delicious looking meal. I don't even know whether to call it a meal or a snack, but it tasted so nice. Like I totally forgot I was having mozzarella. It felt like I was having like a shawarma bread or a taco shell. It tasted so amazing and make sure you give this a try. Everything here is 100% keto compliant and you can decide to add more ingredients if you want. My next meal is called the egg frittata or the egg fiesta so i have here bell peppers and um, onions sausages and garlic which is going to be my ingredients for my egg frittata and also minced pork you can use any protein of your choice i mean the beef or the sausages of your choice i have here my pan which is going to be <laughs> my og pan and four eggs like give people already know this pan on this channel if you don't know this pan you're not an OG so a little message about my pan this my pan is cast iron it is forever and ever nothing can happen to it so those of you who are worried for me saying that oh you don't need you're not supposed to use that kind of spoon on the pan you are going to spoil it darling this my pan is a cast iron not a non-stick pot it is forever ever going to be like this but you know if something touches you to buy me a non-stick pan i will appreciate and collect it <laughs> okay thank you very much for listening to my pan story next i'm going to add garlic into my minced um, pork and fry this up in the pan and add some cameroon pepper like i said earlier i love heat and i love a lot of heat i'm going to fry this up and make sure it is cooked on every side before i add the um, sausages to it i'm also going to cook everything basically just to make sure everything is cooked so just make sure everything is well done before i add my other vegetables because i don't like to cook my vegetables for so long it kind of take out the nutrients from the vegetables and just makes everything soggy so i don't like to cook my vegetables for too long i'm adding my vegetables now because every other thing inside the pan is done i'm adding my yellow green red orange bell peppers in the pan and my onions i'm going to mix this up just a little bit it didn't even take long on the fire about 40 seconds i mixed this up for about 40 seconds because i was going to pop this back into the oven so i mixed this up for about 40 seconds on the fire and i went to break my egg and transferred it back into this pan so the reason why i'm doing it is because i wanted everything here to be evenly distributed i didn't want the vegetables to be on one side the pork to be on one side or the sausages to be on one side so i had to do everything on the fire next i'm breaking up my eggs i'm going to add some salt and some pepper to my eggs mix this up or whisk it up and then add to my vegetables on the fire and just transfer it to the oven immediately
so for this recipe it's almost the same thing as egg muffins just that this is bigger and this is richer and more i don't know more intentional so i put this in the oven for about um, 200 degrees celsius for um, 20 to 30 minutes because i wanted it to be done properly done and brought it out and immediately it was out it was so fluffy and really really good looking so I, I couldn't wait to have a taste you can cut this up in whatever size or shape you want mind you yes i'm using a knife in my pan and i told you it is cast iron nothing will happen to it and then scoop it out as you want or if you want to scoop everything out it will come out because there's already oil at the bottom so it didn't stick to the um, pan i'm having this with avocado here which is my fat sauce and also some bulletproof coffee which i obviously have more fat in form of butter so this is a complete like good looking keto meal you should give a try for my next meal it's going to be eggplant amala and for my people in africa or i don't even know people outside africa have swallows i just want to tell you are not left out when it comes to your swallows in the keto diet we consider you all so we have really really good swallows which you should try out although we are not saying that they are the best or they taste exactly like the ones you have like your fufu or your eba and all that but we obviously have good swallows you should check out there is the cabbage swallow there is the what's it called coconut swallow and there's cauliflower swallow also and here i'm having the eggplant swallow this eggplant amala so i'm just going to dice this up and put it on the fire to boil once it's boiled you want to have a consistency that looks like this really really soft and you obviously know it is done already then i'm going to transfer this into a blender and blend this up that will further on give me a consistency that looks like a pudding or looks like pap so once it is done in that way you'll know it is ready to start mixing and this is obviously the co color of amala just that you need to make it bind or you need to make it to be binded rather so for my binding i'm going to be using the xylem husk which is a fiber it is a xylem husk is a keto compliant fiber that helps your food you know to bind up and gives it a shape or give give you the desired shape that you want so that is what i'm going to use as my binder for this um column this i said collie for this eggplant amala and if you want to know more about my Cauli sorry why am i mentioning cauliflower about xylem husk i'm going to leave a card up in the description where i talked more about it in my nigerian keto diet haul so make sure you do check out that video to know what what um, side i almost mentioned cauliflower again to know what xylem husk is all about so this is the consistency you get if you want it to be thick or if you want it to be more solid you can continue mixing till it becomes harder than this or whichever way you want it to be so this is fine for me so i'm having this with okra soup and ogbono soup if you're in nigeria you know what that means and some you know protein inside many many obstacles in my meal so this is what i had it with my next meal is kind of like a breakfast sort of meal it is the It is a chia seed pudding and i'm having this with the almond milk you can also have this with coconut milk which is totally fine but here i was able to get almond milk and there are people who make almond milk also which is very very possible and also fine so into my almond milk i'm going to add about two and a half spoon tablespoon of chia seeds into the milk and just wait for it to swell up because you have to make this swell up for it to have that pudding consistency then i'm going to add my 
um stevia to that my stevia is stevia is a sweetener that is keto compliant and you need to be very very light-handed with the stevia because if you go too hard on it you're going to have aftertaste which you would not like and i do not like aftertaste for any reason like i finished eating you why are you still tasting in my mouth so you need to be very very light-handed with the stevia you cover this up you can either cover this up overnight when you make this in the in the night and the next morning you want to have it or you can cover it for about 10 minutes and it is done and i'm going to have this with strawberries blueberries and some other you know toppings so i'm here i'm um, slicing up my strawberries that i'm going to use as my toppings for my chia seeds i'm also going to be having blueberries flax seed and coconut flakes and i don't know let's just go on so you can see the consistency this is giving me now it looks somewhat like oats or like a pudding so that's why it's called the chia pudding or chia seed pudding i'm going to add my strawberries to eat i'm going to add my blueberries i'm going to add flax seed i'm going to add coconut flakes also and for the coconut flakes i made them myself on my instagram story that is why i told you guys to follow my instagram so that you'll be able to see the meals that do not make it here they are obviously on my instagram so make sure you do follow my instagram which is timmy banjo i'm going to put that on the screen so that you can follow my instagram and you know check out my highlights save the foods and make sure you follow the recipes that i have there for you to get your 100 percent keto compliant meals So this is totally feeling and if you give this a try do let me know thank you guys for sticking around with me up to this point and if you're going to try any of my recipes let me know follow my socials be subscribed to my channel and i'll see you in my next one bye